Hey everyone, God bless you. So I know it's been a really long time since I've been able to jump on here. Please forgive me for that. There has been so many crazy changes happening. Um, as some of you know, I, uh, well, I was um, a middle school teacher. That was my day job. You know, I don't just make YouTube videos. I actually had a, had a job. Um, but since the recent mandate, and you know my stance on those things, um, since the recent mandate, I've been since furloughed and um, without pay, so I've been home. Um, and I know that the Lord is just kind of moving me in a new direction. Um, there's a lot that's been going on, a lot with our um, the business that my husband and I are opening up. Um, and so, you know, God's always been there. He's always going to provide. He's always going to bring the show the way. So, um, but yes, so that's something that's happened to me recently. So I apologize for not having had the chance to make any other kind of um, videos recently, but now I have more time I can dedicate to this and to the other things that God is kind of um, leading me in. But uh, enough about me. Let's get right into it. So there is so much that's been going on. I know my last uh, video was more about Afghanistan, and there's a lot that's happened since then. Um, but I do want to draw your attention to some important things that are happening here, okay? Um, well, the first thing, and one of the most important <laughs> things that I thought this was absolutely crazy when I first saw this, um, if you didn't hear about this yet, it says the Abramic family house in Abu Dhabi is to open in 2022. Now, those of you who hear, you know, what I say concerning prophetic words, that 2022 is that year of division, you're going to start to see the dividing of people. Um, and there's, you know, the enemy's division, and there's godly division, and God is going to allow some of this uh, division to take place to start weeding out, right? Um, and again, God is a good God. He wants to see people saved where I believe we're going to see some radical, amazing things start to happen here um, in the coming days. But 2022 is going to be a big year prophetically. I believe that. And it's amazing. And, and this is what's happening. This is on the Vatican's news. Um, so it says as of right now that this uh, house, this family house is set to open in 2022. And basically, it has a synagogue, a church, and a mosque in a single complex. So it's a way of bringing all the Abrahamic religions together um, to worship together and to quote unquote, to right, bring peace, okay? Bring a type of peace. Or it says, in this case, the HCHF, Higher Committee of Human Fraternity. It's interesting how all these uh, groups just want to be in fraternities, sororities, secret societies, right? We know how this goes already, okay? So I'm preaching to the choir here. But anyway, the Abrahamic family house, um, <clears throat> it's taking its name from, obviously, from Abraham, right? Because the belief is that all three serve the same God, Jews, Christians, and Muslims. But we know, right, that it's not, there's only one true God. Um, and that true God wouldn't send a certain messenger, right, that would lie. Um, that's not who our God is. And so we know that the uniting of these faiths is something that we are going to see in the end times. And it was prophesied um, that there will be peace that is brought to the Med Middle East, which there was actually um, another set new peace deal that was apparently supposed to be taking place here very shortly um but so this one says pope francis and the grand imam um, ahmed el Tayyib of al azhar after signing the document on human fraternity in abu dhabi and this was back in 2019 of course right in the midst of you know right before uh the pandemic is taking about to take place um you know we all know there's lots of construction and things that have been happening since then but anyway there's some shared values um so the idea is this this is being you know uh, promoted by Pope Francis, which we know is being used mightily. I take the stance, I don't believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. Um, some people believe that. I believe that he's going to play the role of the false prophet when the uh, the son of perdition is then revealed, right? When that man of sin comes about and he's going to be a John the Baptist type of figure and kind of point the way and say, because he right now is a voice, right? For the secular world, they look at him as a religious voice. And so, a lot of people follow what they what he says so that's how i see his role in the end times when it comes to the false prophet um and the antichrist some take a different stance and if you do that's okay but that's how i'm uh feeling as if this will play out um 
So interfaith harmonious coexistence. Now, the coexist, right, we talked about this, is bringing together all of the faiths to be able to worship together, to exist together, um, and to, to be able to worship, right? So this three places of worship um, will be the place where it's preserved. So there's the idea is it's on the same lot, but you'll see there's three different uh, types of faiths that are there. Now, the idea behind this is just... Um, I think I have another, okay, wait, not this one. Okay, the Abramic family house, this one here. So it kind of shows you, it gives you a little bit of idea of what the architecture would look like. Um, so that you have the mosque there. Here's the, here's a mosque. Okay, so you can come and worship as a mosque. Here is their church, with the big old cross there. Um, and then this is the synagogue. Okay, so you can see all three and and so why is this important this is important because it is really coming together right we're starting to see prophecy more and more play out as if it wasn't already <laughs> but we're starting to see it more and more but i think the important thing to look at is the leaders who are behind it so we have pope francis and some uh, the grand imam um and so those two but anyway they they anticipate to open next year so we'll have to see um, exactly how that plays out. But again, that is prophetically uh, biblical. And now this isn't something new. So I did take a chance to research because I hadn't heard of this before, but there is something called the Abramic House. And it's actually a fellowship that's offered right in Washington, DC. So this stuff's already been going on. And it looks like they already were looking for um, getting fellows for the year of 2020, uh, 2022. And there was an application for 2021. So basically they come together and their their whole thing is, you know, oh, we can coexist. Let's learn how to do that and how to marry and bring together the faiths, right? Which we know that um, the Antichrist will come together. He'll be worshipped under um, all of the, the religions, everything coming together to worship this one, this one leader. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, it's definitely something to go a little deeper in. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the the good old, um, you know what? I'm just gonna leave this on for you. Being, you know, hopefully AI won't won't get me. Um, but one thing I noticed was the amount of false prophets who are speaking. Now you have to understand that that false prophets also are a voice when it comes to uh, the manipulation of scriptures for the gain of that person or that ideology. And in this case, this is a big one where um, they're using this scripture. I've seen this multiple times where they'll say, love thy neighbor. And I've, I've, I, this is actually uh, specific to, in this case, um, the Pope saying, you know, that this is a form of loving your neighbor by going and, and doing this. Now, there's a lot to be said about this. And again, I'm very weary about how much I can say or cannot say. Um, but there, all I'm going to say is obviously do your research. Um, the purge when it comes to videos about this has been very strong. And um, so I, there's not much that I can say, but I can say that there has been some things, some evidence, right, that shows that uh, this is actually wiping out certain natural, some fill in the blank. Um, and that's what's also causing people to get a little more sick um, because it's actually wiping out the good stuff, right? The good cells. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, I'm going to come back to this concept, is I've noticed, and I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, and I'm, I'm like, if I didn't take a picture of it, I don't know anybody would even believe me. Um, but I have also noticed that there has been a rollout when it comes to 6G, now, I have not seen anywhere anybody saying like, oh, like we're starting this 6G. It's all just still 5G. But with the increase, when we talk about the increase of frequency, that has to have a role, right? It has to have a role on number of cases and things going up and the pain and, and people not being able to breathe or whatever is going on. This has to play an impact, right? And, and I thought it was incredible because it's kind of being done under our noses. So I took a screenshot of my home screen. I don't know if it's going to show you. Hopefully it will if you can see over there in the top corner. But look at the corner there. That's a six, right? And I saw that multiple times. There were multiple times where I was actually, let me, um, 
I'm going to just temporarily stop sharing so I can show you so you can see it um, bigger. But okay, so there's a six there. You see that? Uh, okay, forgive my my screen a little dirty. I have a, a, a little one who likes to touch my screen with his banana fingers. <laughs> okay, so 6G. So yeah, those things are happening. All right, so I'm going to go back um and i think i really think this has an impact on you know the things that we're seeing and the the things that are happening because it's not being talked about of course i haven't seen anything if you have please let me know um but i've seen it multiple times i've took taken a few screenshots but there's one specifically so you can't say like oh it's not real um i this is another uh person who i've seen saying the same thing love thy neighbor right if you do this then you're embodying that spirit because you want to care i saw this woman she was giving like a whole lecture about how it's the godly thing to do and god has given doctors wisdom and that is a manipulation of the scriptures because to push an agenda and again um that is a good example of false prophecy all right I want to get into um, the main thing here today, and this is going to connect to one other thing, and then I'll, we'll, we'll be pretty much done for today. But I want to talk about this um, show called The Squid Game. Now, oh my goodness, if you want to talk about Illuminati in your face, like Big Brother in your face, and and the the amount of programming and mental just blockage of of people, this is it. Like this is it. Because if you don't get what's actually going on after watching, people are binge watching. It's like number one on Netflix. If you don't know after this that I just at this point, it's like, oh, I, I I'm I yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the squid game. Now, when I first heard this, I'm like, okay, what is this? And I actually have this like really big check in my spirit. I did not want to look this up, um, but I watched the trailer. And after watching the trailer, I knew in my spirit, I cannot watch the show. Um, I just felt very disturbed. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to expose it. And I'm not going to talk about it because I want to bring these things forward. And hopefully if somebody watches my video and they're blessed by it, then amen. But I want to talk about this. So the Squid Games, straight up demonic. Okay, so basically the premise is, and this was done through research, I, I'll read about it, I'll watch little clips here and there, but I have to really be prayed up for this. But basically the premise is that they compete for money, and there are um, basically these people who are in a lot of debt, okay, and they go and they compete for money, and it's sort of like the Hunger Games in a sense, except, you know, where there's people that are watching for entertainment, um, but they're, they're, they have to kill each other they kill each other and then they lose, they lose in the, one of the games, the game, whatever the round of the game is, will kill that person. Now, one, what is the impact of seeing so many dead bodies? I mean, that is traumatizing and we don't even realize it, but the amount of exposure and numbness that comes from being exposed to multiple deaths is, is one thing, right? So that's why when you see people like out in the street, most people walk past, they're like, okay, whatever, like a person could be laying there and most people don't even, they're not phased by it because they're so used to seeing it in their video games and shows and things like that. It creates like a, like a, you're used to it, right? Which is petrifying. <laughs> considering this okay um but anyway so people kill each other they're killed by losing the game and then um they the others kind of turn on each other and they start to form gangs and i'm going to come back to that in a minute because it's going to connect to some upcoming things in our world all right um but that being said so it's kind of like how we have the elites of the world, right? And there's a specific um, thing with the banks and with the Rothschilds. I'm gonna set, I'm gonna show you specifically the the clues that are kind of dropped in this game. But basically, that they're all in debt now. I don't know about you, but I've been saying this. The Lord has been saying, get out of debt. Why? Because that the, the one who is in debt, according to Proverbs, is slave to the lender. And God doesn't want us to be slave to any bank or to any system or anybody. And so um, when we talk about that, right? We talk about provision and stewardship of what God has given us. This is a big piece of it. So every single person was in immense debt. Our country is founded on debt. It's constantly running from debt. Um, so if you're in debt, do your best, get out of debt. Um, but anyway, so Squid Games, everyone's in debt, so they're competing for this money. 
Okay. Um, but what the connection, first of all, in the name that got me is squid. What is a squid in the spirit? We talk about when we pray the, 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 per, not personification, more like the animal connection to the spirit of mind control is a squid. That's the first thing. This is about mind control. This whole game is about mind control, right? The octopus, the squid spirit, right? The tentacles, it brings confusion. A lot of times, if you get a lot of mental pressure or mental pain, some will say, oh, that's witchcraft. That also can be connected to mind control where you just can't get, you just can't get control literally of what your thoughts are in your mind and, and clarity of mind. That is this spirit. Now, um, pink, you're going to see there's this, let me show you here. There's these uh, people here that kind of help run the game. And they're right here. They're in, you can see them there in pink, in these pink suits. Okay. Now, they all have a symbol on their head. Some have a circle, some have a triangle, some have a square, and instantly it brought me back to my child. I'm like, PlayStation. When you think of PlayStation and the game controller, what is it about? It's about the game. It's about controlling the game and programming. It's a program, right? We talk about MK Ultra. We talk about programming. So this is all about that. These people are programmed, they carry out, they do what they're supposed to do, and they help control the masses, right? They help keep the game at play and at bay. Now, what's even more disturbing is pink is usually associated with this color as well, with, with mind control, as, as well as some other things, right? We talk about the the the, the mirror being broken, uh, split personalities, the MK Ultra butterfly. These are all symbols. They work in symbology. It's how they can speak to one another and know who's who, right? They love you using symbols. Well, check this out. Let's go a little deeper. So there's the video game idea, this idea of programming, right? So you have this real world programming and you have what's happening here in the show in the game. But the game is controlled by the elite. But the elite in this show are called the VIPs. Now we know that there is that we have the satanic elite. We know what they do. We know that there's their Illuminati handlers and we are the herd. So in this case, you're seeing in the pink, in the suits, um, you're seeing the handlers right that's basically who they are these guys right here okay in the pink these are like the handlers these are the ones programmed set to, to do what they're supposed to do they don't question they just do then you have all these people here in the green the herd right that, that that's who we are to them we're cattle and the show even mentions and says why are you doing all of this and he says well you're nothing but horse that's what you are your horses your your animals because that's how they look at us and it's all a big game for them so that being said, I thought it was really interesting that there were 456 players and they were playing for 45.6 billion um, yen, yuan, yen, yuan, yen. I don't, I don't know their currency, how to say it, but that's what they're playing for. And it was the same number. Now, I couldn't get the full understanding of what 456, if somebody knows what the occult meaning is for that, please let me know. Or if they were able, I thought maybe it has something to do with population. Like maybe the whole goal of all this was to reduce the population to like, uh, you know, for 4 billion, 5 billion, something like that. It actually is crazy because it comes out to 33 pounds. 33. We've got that also Masonic number. 33 pounds and 38 million, I think, was the conversion in the money for the prize for this for this show. Okay. Now, again, it's not a real show. It's Netflix. It's not like an actual game show, but it's, it's a show about a game show. Okay. So here's the kicker. It's voluntary. Nobody is forced to play the game. And that's the same for you. You're not forced to play the game that they've set out for you, right? If you actually stop playing the game, you can stop at any moment, but you continue. And that's exactly what's going on here. That's part of the mind control. You can stop it at any moment because the Lord said, I've given you this authority. You don't have to, to live like that. You don't have to succumb to these things. You are not, you are in the world. You are not of the world, but a lot of people are under this mind control and they go, they get up every day to a job that they hate and they work and they work and they work and they work. And, they work, and then they're just miserable. Why? You you are playing the game. Part of the game means that there's elite that literally sit back and watch and laugh. And they think this is all a joke. People's lives are at stake and it's a big game to them. And that's what this show is, is, is showing you. Okay. 
Um, and, and throughout the whole thing, that's all these VIPs are doing. Now, who are the VIPs? This is what the VIPs look like. If you aren't making these connections, guys, this is Google. This is not some crazy fringe conspiracy theory. This is real. Look at what they, what they're wearing. Look, look at the masks. They're all masked up. Okay. Here's what they're wearing. Look at them. All right, this one got me right here because it reminded me of something I saw with the Rothschilds. Look, okay, that's enough. This should show you. These are the VIPs. They come in and they bet on who is going to win the game. Now, this one right here, I'm going to go to Rothschilds in a moment. This guy right here threatens another guy and says, oh, I'll make your wildest dreams come true if you'll do something really gross to me. And yes, I'm, it's, it's a sexual thing and I don't wanna, don't wanna say it, but that's what they do, okay? This is the kind of stuff that they do. Now, this is from the Rothschild's mansion party. This is Google, friends. You could simply just look it up. I mean, look at this. This is exact, it's the same thing. Look at these, it's a big party. Everyone's wearing their masks how they look, 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 even, even the colors that looked like that other guy, guy's mask. All right, look, this is what this is homage, paying homage to. All right, but people are so asleep that they don't see it. Look at these masks, look at this. Okay, the beasts that are there, the horns, everything. And all of that connects right back to this game. Now, like I said, it's voluntary. Nobody's forced to play. There's a point where they all said, we want to quit the game. And because they were all, but they all had to be in agreement. Why do you think they use Hegelian dialectics? Hegelian dialectics are meant to say, you separate here, you separate there and continue to separate and weed people out. Because if we were united on a front or united on something, the game would stop because they couldn't, they couldn't win. But that's not the way that it goes, right? Because of the, the squid, because of the mind control. All right. Now, one thing I want to get to, again, this game is performed on an island until there's one winner. At the end, the main character, his hair is pink. Of course, another thing, he's now mind controlled, right? They're all mind controlled. Um, there, there is a part um, oh, on the island, and instantly when they said island, I thought of Epstein's island, but that's 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 another thing. Um, don't even want to, couldn't even imagine the things that went on there, or the the sacrifices, or murders, or anything. And like, and, and it's at all a game, right? Now let's talk about this. This is what I wanted to get to. Now, food shortages. In the there is an episode, and it's it's not a you know any surprise that these things are being rolled out now. But in the episode, there was a mentioning about food, okay? So there's a scene where typically the, um, the well, there's a guy named the front man. That should tell you something. Somebody's a front for something. Um, but not even the front man. These little minions, these dudes here with the pink and the masks, okay? They're just kind of doing the their bidding. Um, those guys, they basically, here you go. That's a better picture for you there. I'll just leave that. I'll leave that up for you. They basically would intervene if something went haywire, right? If something was going off, if somebody was cheating in the game, they would intervene. So I want to show you. Give me one second. Okay. It even goes into the ideas of equality. It even goes into, oh, we're all made equal. And again, equal in the sense for them is different. Um, than true equality. But so this is what they're looked at. There's the Illuminati staircase for you. We know that that's one, but look, they're just cogs in a machine. That's all we are to them. Um, but I want to show you, there was the scene, here's the people look after one of the games. They're, they're all trying to complete the game and these people are watching. They're all competing, right? For money, competing for one another. Well, anyway, there was this one scene and basically this, they, they live, they sleep in these bunks. Okay. And there's a bunch of beds. That's what I was looking for. I can't find it, but there was a bunch of beds and they're all sleeping in one giant room. And when the lights go out, they basically, some of them kill each other. All right. So it's like survival of the fittest basically is what they say. So 
what happens in this is there's um, an issue with food in one of the scenes and these little pink minion dudes, they don't, they don't intervene and they normally would and they don't in this case. So there were a couple characters who their food was taken. Basically they lined up and there's only enough for each person. There's only just enough for each person. And some of these groups started forming gangs. Well, some of the gangs took the people's food and they were getting angry. So what happened? A fight broke out. They didn't do anything based on there was now a shortage of food. So the fight broke out and they didn't do anything about it. They said they wanted to watch for survival of the fittest. What would happen if there wasn't enough food? Why is that important? That's important because I've been seeing this everywhere about food shortages. Now, there is very much um, a fear about not having enough, or, and I've been seeing things about uh, shortages when it comes to stocking and to food. Uh, so why is that important? So why does any of this matter? Well, if you've been paying attention, okay, you'll see that there's things like this coming out. Biggest U.S. retailers charter private cargo ships to sail around port delays. There have been a, not only delays, oh no, was it not, okay, not only delay, delays in the global supply chain, right, but there's also been shortages of workers. Why? Because of the recent mandates. There are people who are not complying, um, and then there are people who are just not working, right? This was already an issue. People didn't want to work. They were receiving um, uh, benefits, but they were just, they were staying home, right? Unemployment. Now, with all the things that are happening now, you're seeing that shelves, uh, a lot of shelves are just straight empty, okay? And now this is also to create this illusion of scarcity. But the truth is that there's plenty of these cargo ships that are literally just waiting. They're waiting. And they've been extended in terms of time. They've been waiting, I think it was like double the amount of time, like where it would take 40 days to ship. Now it's taking 80 days. Um, so you're seeing that, uh, let's see, look, you can even see um, Costco said the retailers chartered three ships, um, each capable of carrying around a thousand containers to bring goods between Asia and North America. We'll be making up to 10 deliveries for Costco over the next year. Those ships will account for under 20% of the warehouse retailers import volume, he said. So even everything that's supposed to be coming in you're starting to already see this happening, okay? What is the idea? The idea is that by creating the illusion of scarcity, right, it creates panic and it creates fear in people. And if you can create panic and fear in people, you can also eliminate people. And I wouldn't be surprised if you're gonna start seeing some of these things taking place. Now, again, I'm not saying these things to scare you. And I wanted to connect this all to what was happening in the show, because as you know, we said, it's a big game to them. Like everything is a game. Everything is really just like, what is going to happen next? So um, the good thing is, though, that we have a relationship with the Lord and God is capable of doing anything. He doesn't need, you know, um, our, our help to do these things. He is more than capable of providing for us. But these ideas of these shortages uh, in supply and food and things that are coming should be telling of things to come. You know, the Bible warns us that these, these times are going to happen. So I just wanted to put this out there, right? Because I think it's important not only to understand, like, you know, what is being portrayed in the media um and you know what the enemy is is planning but also to know that as a person who is in faith you have god you have relationship so stay firm in that relationship stay firm and understand that these things are going on if you know more about the shortages or you've been hearing more about that i would love to hear from you um if you have more insight into any of the things that were mentioned in this video, but please, 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 you know, take these things to, to prayer. As I always tell you, anything that I put out there, I tell you to take it to prayer, but I would be wise, you know, and, and I'm not saying do these things out of fear, but when you go to the store, put a couple cans on the side, you know, that doesn't hurt anything. It's, it's a wise thing to do. 
Um, so I love you. Thank you so much for watching. Go forth in love, peace, boldness, and perseverance to preach the message of the gospel. Please give this video a thumbs up, comment. I love to hear from you. Um, and I would love to see where you guys are all at in terms of just preparation and things that are going on. You know, God warns us of these perilous times to come. But also, if you're not in a position where you're able to do that, that's okay. God is going to provide. So I just, you know, believe that for you and for this situation. Shalom.